Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. I want to do a short video on my experience with upgrading the RAM on a mid-2017 iMac with some benchmarks and real-world usage before and after the upgrade and also a brief mention of the upgrade process itself which was remarkably straightforward. So let's get into it. These are the specs of my current iMac. I opted to go for the 4.2GHz processor and the 1TB SSD but went with the stock 8GB of DDR4 memory as I knew it would be a lot easier to upgrade at a later stage compared to the processor and storage and who in the right mind is going to pay Apple prices for more RAM anyway. Having a quick look at the Apple website even just the 16 gig upgrade asks £180 to the price, the same price as the processor upgrade, so if you're thinking long term, then leaving the RAM makes more sense. The Apple tax for a 32 gig upgrade, which is what I'm doing here, would be £540, but I got a good deal with Mr. Memory at £120 for each 16 gig stick of Kingston and HyperX, making it well under half the price of Apple. I was going to say I won't even mention 64 gigs of RAM, but I'll get back to that before the end of the video. Taking a quick look at Geekbench, I actually started recording the benchmark as a screen recording until I realised that this was obviously going to affect the final score, so I redid the test with no other processes running. So you can see a normal single core score is around 5500 and a multi-core score somewhere around 18000 to 18400. I also did a boot test, I carried out a few and they were all coming in around 32 seconds to the login screen. So these are the sticks just before inserting them into the Mac. I put a towel down on my workbench before starting work. Getting the cover off was fairly straightforward, although the cover release button requires more pressure than I expected. Pull the two levers outwards to release the holder and the RAM sticks are now easily accessible. I doubt it has any effect on performance but I removed each of the 4 gig sticks and then placed the 16 gig sticks in their positions. And then it's just a case of pushing the levers inwards to collapse the holder, then press the rows of small springs around the cover evenly to pop it back into position. Then a quick check to make sure the iMac is recognising the additional RAM modules with the 16 gig sticks now showing in the top position. So how does it perform? I did a couple of artificial benchmarks in Geekbench and I got up to 5600 in the single core score so a modest increase there and in the multi core score it jumped up to 19,500. Next is the boot test from Cold, and this one came in around 22 seconds to the login screen but I've run this a few times since and it averages around 20 seconds so a substantial improvement from 32 seconds there. But obviously the main benefits are going to come when running apps and one thing I've noticed is the mapping software I use, RootBuddy, which is the best dedicated mapping software I've found for the Mac platform is much snappier. Zoom is much quicker and as I move around the tiles are drawn much quicker. I also had to look at the RAM activity monitor while I opened several apps. The fan did ramp up as all the apps were opening but you can see from the monitor that I still had lots of headroom left on the RAM and even though there are far more apps open than I would ever normally have, the iMac had no problem with RootBuddy still showing no signs of lag. So would I recommend the upgrade? Compared to Apple prices, this is definitely the way to go. However, I'm not convinced that modest improvements with the 32 gig upgrade are worth the price, unless you're the type of person that needs lots of apps open at the same time. In my opinion, the sweet spot would be to add two 8 gig modules, giving the base model a respectable 24 gigs in total, with the option of upgrading to 32 at a later stage. The 16 gig sticks fitted here give the option of taking this iMac to 64 gigs, but the processor and graphics card are going to let you down before the RAM does, and you should have probably have bought yourself an iMac Pro in that case anyway. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, and if you disagree, you know what to do. Until the next one, thanks for watching.